uh, out of those sprays, one of the uh, prescription sprays that's a little bit unique is called Exhance. It's the only nasal spray, rather than squirting it in your nose and inhaling it through your nose, you actually exhale through your mouth and it goes into your nose. And it tends to go, um, tends to work better than the other sprays because the delivery goes higher and deeper in your nose and it's made for specialized conditions such as nasal polyps. Hey guys, welcome back to the We Knows Noses podcast. Uh, I'm here with my two partners, Dr. Smith Hi, and Dr. 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 Andavia. So um, this is just going to be a quick topic. A lot of our patients ask us about different nasal sprays, and many, many nasal sprays are available over the counter. Um, and there's different nasal sprays for different conditions. And um, so we'll just go over a few categories and what they're used for. So, um, Dr. Smith, do you want to start us off with one uh, category of nasal sprays? Sure. Uh, we can talk about decongestant nasal sprays. Um, so something we often see in the office are patients who come in and they say, oh, I use this spray for my nose, and they may not know exactly what it is or what they're using, or um, they just know that it makes them feel better, so they keep using it. And one of those products um, is a decongestant nasal spray, so things like Afrin or oxymetazoline or phenylephrine or decongestant uh, nasal sprays and we'll talk about some of the pitfalls that can happen with these nasal sprays. Um, you know, their, their job is to constrict blood vessels within the nasal cavity, shrinking kind of those heating, humidifying things that we've talked about in our old podcast with the turbinates and they do a great job of that, shrinking the soft tissues within the nose and allowing for more airflow. So you, you use them and within you know, five, 10 minutes, you get a, a good vasoconstriction or blood vessel shrinkage and you get a lot of good breathing through the nose uh, and make you feel better. So if you have nasal obstruction, usually from you know, allergies or viruses, a lot of times patients will use these so they feel like they can actually breathe. Um, and the decongestant sprays work great. The biggest problem is that, and most people know that you can get like, quote, addicted to nasal sprays. And this is that nasal spray that has that problem where you can get addiction to it. And that's called um, rhinitis medicamentosa. And what happens is those blood vessels shrink every time you spray that spray, but the nose is kind of intelligent. Those blood vessels start to expand and get bigger to kind of counteract that shrinkage that occurs. And so when you first start spraying it, those turbinates are like this big, and then over time, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. But every time you spray it, you notice the difference from here to here. But what you didn't realize is you started here, and now three, four days into it, you're now starting to get you know, swelling that becomes um, you know, kind of counteractive. And so that rebound swelling that occurs can happen usually within three to four days it can start to occur, but most commonly it happens after like a week or two of using it. So you'll see a, a warning label that says don't use for more than you know, 48 to 72 hours, and that typically is rather true. Um, you know, sometimes we'll see patients with severe nasal obstruction, and one of the hardest things is, uh, is getting them off of these nasal sprays. So um, we try to keep people, you know, to use these in a short duration for acute swelling and, and you know, um, like from bad viruses or bad allergies that they may just need a little relief from congestion. Yep. So we went over the decongestant sprays. Um, another common spray that uh, patients use are the antihistamine sprays. Do you want to go over that, Dr. Andavia? Yeah, yeah. There's, um, th there's a few different brands of antihistamine spray sprays, but they're essentially the equivalent of taking a, a Claritin or a Zyrtec or uh, an Allegra or a Zyzel and then crushing it up, putting it, mixing it with fluid, putting it in a spray and spraying it on, on your nose. And they're, they're great sprays. They tend to work much more quickly than the last class of sprays that we'll talk about. Um, but not as quickly as what Dr. Smith talked about as decongestants. But they do, they do two good things. One, they can dry up your nose, so you can get less mucus, less postnasal drip, less mucus coming from the front of your nose, and then they can also decongest your nose. They will not do it as quickly or as fiercely as a topical decongestant like oxymetazoline, but the effect is very nice. I've used it myself. The biggest downside with uh, these sprays, and there's a few different brands, there's azelastine, which is called Astelin. Um, there's, I'm gonna mispronounce the, the name, Aloptidine, which is pat, uh, patinase. patinase. Yeah. Um, the, the, these sprays taste 
horrible. Um, and so typically we have patients that tilt up their, ne uh, their neck like that, spray it in, and then within, within a second they're tasting it. And it just tastes horrible, it stays in your mouth for a couple hours. And the best thing to do for these sprays, just to tolerate them better, is to make sure your head is level a little bit forward. You can even have, you can even have some of the sprays come out the front and that allows you to tolerate them better. Another side effect, which I, which I don't see that often, is that patients complain that they're pretty tired. Um, I've had a few patients tell me that, um, and we basically switch. If they were using azelastine, we try oloptidine. If they were using oloptidine, we try azelastine. If both cause the tiredness, we just stay away from this class of uh, medications. Yep, and, and then the other big class of uh, nasal sprays are intranasal steroids or intranasal corticosteroids. And there's multiple different brands. Um, some are prescription and some are available over the counter. Some of the common brands include the, um, sprays like Flonase or Fluticasone and Flunicilide. Um, there's Nasacort, there's Nasonex, there's Q-Nasal. Um, there's actually a combination steroid antihistamine spray called Dimista. And then there's a, a more specialized nasal spray that's a steroid as well called Exhance. So all of these sprays generally have a steroid in them that's an anti-inflammatory that reduces swelling in the nose. They're generally safe to be used long term. So you don't have to use, you can use them for months or even years. Uh, the most common side effect we see is dryness and crusting. And sometimes you can get some nosebleeds with the spray. Um, if you're using these sprays for like the long term, we're talking about months to years, it may be a good idea to get your eye pressure checked once a year as well, because there's a theoretical risk of increased uh, intraocular eye pressure with these over the long term. Which is called glaucoma. Exactly. Yep. And, um, you know, out of those sprays, one of the prescription sprays that's a little bit unique is called Exhance. It's the only nasal spray, rather than squirting it in your nose and inhaling through your nose, you actually exhale through your mouth and it goes into your nose. And it tends to go, um, tends to work better than the other sprays because the delivery goes higher and deeper in your nose. And it's made for specialized conditions such as nasal polyps. So those are some of this, um, you know, the, the main medicated sprays. And then there is um, non-medicated sprays available too, right over the counter. Right. Um, yeah. One of the most common are saline sprays. Do you want to go over some saline sure. sprays? Sure. So, you know, saline sprays, there's all sorts of different concoctions of them. There's gels and there's, you know, uh, more, so more viscous solutions that are a little bit thicker. And there's the more, you know, commonly like thinner solutions. Some of them have um, bicarbonate in them to help buffer some of the pH in there. Some of them have other soothing agents that may help uh, be a little like aloe and other things in there that may make them a little more um, tolerable for patients with like sensitive or dry noses. But all in all, the purpose of the nasal sprays um, is to help with the you know cleansing and the and the um, clearance of kind of the dirt, dust, pollen, and debris that settle in the nasal cavity. And so most of us talk about avoidance as the best treatment for allergens, and a lot of it, that's great, but if a lot of the things that people are allergic to, like grass and weeds and mold and dust, are kind of inevitable, they're unavoidable. And so nasal saline sprays can help thin the mucus within the nasal cavity and help the transport mechanism that self-cleans the nose. But then there's also um, some of these more powered ones, like these, um, you know, arm and hammer saline the kind of uh, aerosolized cans, but then there's also like the nasal rinses, like the Neomed sinus rinses, or the Navage, or some of the other neti pot type devices that help kind of flush and cleanse out the nasal cavity. Um, most of those, unless you've had sinus surgery, are really cleansing the nasal cavity and not necessarily cleansing all of the sinuses. Um, but they, they do a, a very thorough job at just cleaning out the turbinates and the filters in the nose, uh, decreasing your contact exposure to those allergens, irritants, and can even be helpful uh, during like acute infections to thin the mucus out when it's real thick, sticky, or even if there's like a mild sinus infection um, to help thin some of that out to help your body flush and clean that stuff out of there. Yep. And a common question we get asked is how do you use a nasal spray? So just really quickly, the most, one of the easiest way to use it is you put it in your nostril and you point the tip away from your septum, so from a, away from the midline, and you kind of aim it towards the, cor the, the inside corner of that eye at a, about a 45 degree angle to the, to the floor. So anything else you guys wanna add? Some, sometimes, sometimes patients don't like that, and I actually tell them to use 
if there's if they're spraying their left nostril, use your right hand and yep. point it to their ear. Um, if it if it feels like it hurts, and yeah. same thing for the right side, use your left hand and point it to the left ear. Um, yep. That might sometimes that can help too. Yeah, lots of tips to help tolerate some of the sprays, especially if they need to be used on like more of a chronic basis or a daily basis. Very good. Well, right, cool. I think that's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Uh, please like and subscribe, and um, we're looking forward to the next podcast. Take care. <laughs>